Most of the Facebook ads tutorials you see here on YouTube are overly complicated, right? They set up these really complex structures and put in these, you know, advanced bidding strategies. And it just makes you do all this work, you know, spend all this money and just not get any results. But after trying hundreds of different strategies, one thing became super clear. The complex ad accounts are the ones that really struggle to scale. And the simple ones are the ones that scale really quickly and really easily. So over the last 30 days, I've been running the simplest single campaign structure across my Facebook ads account, just to see whether it's gonna work. And it actually does. It's brought in 145 purchases and 135 of those purchases are from brand new customers. And the cool thing is this campaign structure only took me 10 minutes to set up and I only look at it once per week. So in this video, I'm gonna show you exactly step-by-step step how to set up this one campaign structure. Even if you've never set up ads before, you can follow along and by the end of this video, you're gonna have it set up the right way. Now, before I give you that strategy, I'm just gonna ask you for one little thing. We have thousands of people every single day that watch these videos, but not everybody subscribes. So if you're taking in what I'm putting down, you love meta ads and you love scaling your business, I would love it if you could subscribe to this channel. Let's head to our ad account. We're gonna click create and we're gonna choose a sales-based campaign. We're gonna click continue. And here we're gonna name the campaign. Now with this type of single campaign strategy, each campaign is focused on selling a product to a specific type of audience, okay? So we don't wanna blend or, or keep it too generic. So in my world, we, we sell coffee and we have different types of coffee. So we have sort of normal strong coffee, we have vanilla coffee, we have decaf coffee. Each of those would be their own campaign. So we wanna create a campaign for the product and the audience that we're trying to sell to, okay? So we're gonna do one here that's just for coffee. So we're gonna call this one CBO, which stands for Campaign Budget Optimization. I'll talk about that in a second. We'll call it Coffee, and I'm just gonna call it Demo so I know for the future, okay? Let's scroll down. Now we're gonna turn off product information, okay? Because that brings the catalog in to your ads, and we don't want that in this type of ad campaign. And this is where we get to the budget. So these are the two types of budgets you can set. You've got campaign budget, and you've got ad set budget. Let me explain those ones to you. So. In a typical meta structure, we've got campaigns and we've got ad sets. Ad sets are the things that hold all your ads together and campaigns is sort of the overarching, you know, the overlord that, that does everything. Now, if we set an ad set budget, let's just say our budget is, is uh, $60, we would probably do something like $20 on each of these ad sets, we'd spread it across thinly, right? And so then what meta would do is it would spend up to $20 on each of these accounts, irrespective if they're, they're doing well or not. Now that strategy isn't really that efficient for scaling where a campaign one is, right? And let me explain. So let's just say we set $60 at the campaign level. What happens is meta then decides where to spend that $60 and it spends it on the ones that are performing the best. So let's just say you've got you know, one ad set that's crushing and these two are no good. It's gonna put most of the money in the ad set that's winning and it's not gonna spend money on the ones that aren't, which means your spend becomes much more efficient. That's why we do CBOs. So we choose CBO and let's choose our budget. We'll do 60 as, a, as that example. Now I'd recommend having a reasonable size budget. You know, the 10 to $20 a day budgets here are no good. At least over $50, if not closer to $100 on these sort of campaigns would be much better. Let's go down a little bit. There's really nothing else we need to set here. So now let's go to the ad set. So if we go back to our structure, I wanna talk a little bit about ad set. So we've got the campaign we've just set up and now we've got these ad sets. Now ad sets are basically like folders that hold your ads, right? And the way we wanna do this is we wanna have a creative based ad set. So each ad set has an objective and a creative type inside it. That way we can test which creative is working and which one's performing and we can turn off the ones that aren't and we can boost the ones that are, okay? So what we can see here is the way we like this structure is for the first ad set, we want it to be an awareness style ad and we use a flexible ad type. I'll show you how to do that in a second. For the second ad set, we want it to be more of an educational style ad. And then for the third ad set, we want it to be more like a, a bottom of funnel buy type ad. And the way we think about this is a top of funnel ad, middle of funnel ad, and a bottom of funnel ad all under one campaign, right? Hopefully that makes sense. So one ad set, one flexible ad, it's as easy as that. So we're going back here. And let's create the first one. So we're gonna do the awareness type ad. Now, because it's gonna be flexible, we'll call it flexible one. We always like to put numbers on it. We're now gonna describe the ads. This is gonna be founder story. And then we're gonna just put in the date that we that we published this, okay? Let's scroll down a little bit. Make sure we've got everything set up. Conversion location is website. We're gonna do maximum number of conversions. We wanna make sure it's using the pixel. And we're gonna choose the event here. And we're gonna make sure that we choose a purchase event only, okay? We're not gonna change anything around attribution models. And you might not have all these settings here because they're always getting added and removed at all times. But if there's attribution model, just do standard. We'll just double check that nothing's uh, nothing weird is turned on. And we're not gonna schedule this at this stage. You obviously could. So really the only thing that you edit in audiences is the location. So and if you're not selling to the world, just choose the country you sell to. 
and let's not worry about anything else. Nothing here, nothing here. And now we can go out and build the ad. So we're gonna go in and we're gonna choose the ad. We're gonna name this the same as the other one. Flex one ad, and we'll call it founder story. And we're gonna say 5.5, okay, awesome. All right, so this is not a partnership ad. We've got all our pages connected, which is great. All right, we're gonna actually choose a flexible ad here, and I'll tell you a little bit more about why we do that when we get closer to uploading the creative. Uh, we'll untick multi-advertiser ads, we'll double check our settings. Okay, uh, nothing we need to change there. All right, so this is where we wanna add the stuff in here. So here's where we get to upload in the creative. Now we chose a flexible ad. The reason we chose a flexible ad is we want Meta to always put the best creative forward, right? And by putting a flexible ad together is we're saying, hey, Meta, here's all our creative. We want you to do what you can with this creative to get the best results possible. So if you think this headline is good with this piece of creative, then put that together. And what it's gonna do is it's gonna be continually testing thousands and thousands of different people to see which one gets the most engagement and which one gets the best results. And that's why we love flexible ads because Meta is smarter than us, it gets more data than us. As opposed to the old way where we create the ad and we put the text behind it and we structure it and make it really strict, you know, the way we test then is we have to keep trialing our own ones to see the results. It just takes a lot longer and costs a lot more money, but using a flexible ad, it is, uh, is the way to go. Now, the secret to a flexible ad is making sure that we don't put too much creative in there, but we just put enough for it to test. And so we use a strategy which we call the 3-2-2 method. That means that we have three pieces of creative, two headlines and two descriptions. Let me show you how that works. So I'm gonna add in some videos and I've got three videos here. So I'm gonna choose one, two, three. We're gonna upload that. So we've chosen three videos and we're gonna choose two texts and two headlines. And the way we get the text is we go straight into ChatGPT. Now, this is a, a custom GPT I built inside our e-commerce academy that basically helps us come up with complete ad copy. Now I'm not gonna go through this in detail here. There's one I've created earlier. So I'll grab those details and I'll copy them straight along. So we've got two primary texts. We do one short and one long. All right, so I'll copy and paste this into Meta now. All right, okay, so that's all pasted in there. So what we can see now is we've got three pieces of media, two pieces of text and two headlines. What this means is that it comes up with uh, 12 variations that it's gonna try. So one variation might be that video on that text, and then another variation is that video with that text and these headlines. So it's gonna try all these different things to find out which one is the best. We don't like putting more than this 322 method in there because we don't wanna to have too many variations if we've got a small budget. So we wanna just have just enough to get the right results, but not too many that we can't get any results whatsoever. Let's keep going down and making sure that it's right. So now we're gonna to point to the page. We want to make sure that we point to a collection page or a product page, okay? Now we don't need to worry about a display link, but one thing we wanna do is we wanna turn off this advantage plus creative optimization. So this changes the ad without even checking with you, but not only that, it drives it to different destinations, which we don't want. We want it to go to our product page. So make sure you keep that off. Now I turn the call to action to be shop now, and let's keep going down. And now I'm also going to add in a URL parameter. Now this is really important so we can track what ads are working. So we're gonna say the campaign source is meta. The campaign medium is CPC. And the campaign name is gonna be campaign name and the campaign content is going to be ad name. Okay, we click apply. This adds parameters to every time someone clicks so you can track it directly in your Shopify store. So now let's have a quick preview on how these look. Okay, they're looking great. And if we jump through, we can see different variations. That's me talking to camera with the founder style. So this is the top of funnel awareness style ad. Right, so that is ad set number one. Let's have a look at what ad set number two is. So this is awareness. Ad set number two is more of an education style ad. So this is where we get down the funnel a little bit. We head back to the ad set we just created. We're gonna click these three dots and then we're gonna click duplicate. Now we wanna duplicate this two times, okay? So this adds to the one campaign strategy so that we'll have, you know, ad set one and these two additional ones here, right? Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna rename these and we're gonna change the content inside them. So this second one, we're gonna call this flex number two. And we're gonna name it the type of content we're putting in there. Now this is middle of funnel, so we're gonna do an educational one. We're gonna do a how-to video, okay? We'll remove the word copy. We're gonna do the same thing in the ad name. The reason we wanna name these properly is because of the tracking parameters we put in earlier, uh, these names will come through so we can see which ads are actually driving the sales for us, okay? Then we're gonna scroll down, and all we're gonna do now is we're gonna just gonna change this media. So we're gonna change this by removing it, and we're gonna add in videos of the how-to. Okay, so these are the how-to, how to make coffee videos. We're gonna upload these in. 
remember we've got three videos, two primary text, two headlines, okay? Now we're not gonna be changing the text here. We're gonna let Meta determine which is the right text. Really these first three ad sets in this type of structure is to determine which creative is actually gonna work, which hook works, which style of video sort of works, okay? And then we go to the third one, and this is gonna be flex number three. We're gonna do a testimonials image on this one, okay? Copy. And we do exactly the same thing. We go down and we are going to remove this media. And in this one, I'm actually gonna do an image. So I like to have a good mix of images and videos. But there is a rule. We don't want images and videos to be in the same ad set because this is a flexible ad. What we're trying to do is determine, you know, which creative is working, you know, and which image is working, which video is working, all those sorts of things. And if we mix them all up together, it's really hard to get a good sense of what's actually working. Now, the main objective of this one campaign strategy is to have a really easy setup that you can test creative to see what's working. And what we're doing is we're sending the creative to Meta, Meta's putting it out into the world, and it's telling us whether or not people are liking it. And if people are liking it, it's gonna spend more money on it. It's gonna put the combination together and, and tell us it's good. If it doesn't spend money on it, then the creative's no good. So what we then do is we take that learning and we start building out additional ad sets. So if we find a video that's working and a text combination that's working, in our ad set four, we're gonna create that ad set based on that learning. So the idea is over time, we just get better and better and better because every ad set effectively should teach us something that we should do in the following ad set. Once you've got all that set up now, the next thing to do is basically just click this publish button. Once you click publish, we're gonna wait seven days. I don't want you to go in and change anything for seven days. We need an entire week to go through for Meta to learn, right? And your budget needs to be around $60 to $100 a day. We don't wanna have these $10, $20 a day budgets because they're just not gonna work. We need to give Meta enough rope, enough budget to go out there and try and find your audience. We need to give it enough budget to go and test the creative across people and test the different variations, right? So make sure you have the right budget behind you. Now, if you implement this one campaign strategy, I'm very confident that your store is gonna grow and your sales are gonna grow. However, if you think this was good, you should see what we do inside the e-commerce bootcamp. We teach stuff like this every single day to hundreds of e-commerce founders, people that are trying to take their side hustle to a full-time income. And I invite you to join the bootcamp. We don't just have tutorials on meta ads. We have tutorials on email marketing, SEO, Google ads, you know, website optimization, email marketing, you name it, everything that you need to grow an e-commerce business from a side hustle to a full-time income is inside the e-commerce bootcamp. Now you can join by visiting ecomacademy.co slash bootcamp, or just click a link in the description and uh, we'll get you right in there. Otherwise, I've got a couple of videos here that are gonna absolutely help you crush growing your e-commerce store.